Hey everyone and welcome back to Daily Tuition. In this tutorial, we will look at the comparison between set interval and request animation frame function. We all know the set interval method calls a function at a specific interval. So let's look at how set interval works. So as you can see in this example, I have here index.html. Inside this, I have here two containers. Inside my first container, here I have two buttons and I'm going to center both these buttons. The first button is used to, to start the animation and the second button is used to stop the animation. Then we have here a container. Inside this container, I have here a frame and different dots. I'm going to put a different styling to these dots using style.css. So if you back to the style.css file, you will get some styling here. Using the styling, I'm going to center all this content to the center of the document and I'm going to specify some different colors to these dots. Now, if you want to get this example from the code pane, I'm going to put the link in the description. So I'm going to have this style.css and in the main section here, let me first show you how set interval works. So for example, let's suppose if I have here a variable, let request and let i is equal to zero. And if I create here two constant variables, so if I grab both these buttons inside my JavaScript, then I'm going to call here a statement constant start document dot get element by ID. And I'm going to call the start button and the stop button. After that, here I'm going to create a constant function. So I'm going to say here constant perform animation is equal to call here ES6 arrow function. And inside this, let me first print the console.log and increase the value of this i by one. Just out of that, here I'm going to just call start dot add event listener. I'm going to add an event on this start button, which is click. And when we click on this button, I'm going to call here a function, which is the callback function. And inside this, I'm going to say console.log and I'm going to print the i variable. That's easy, right? Now, just out of that, here I'm going to say request is equal to set interval. And inside this, here I'm going to call perform animation. Oops, I think I misspelled here perform animation. And then I'm going to execute this after every one second. So I'm going to pass here 1000. Just out of that, to stop this animation, as you know, we have this ID. So I can stop this animation with the stop button. So I'm going to say here stop. So I'm going to say here stop dot add event listener and call here click event. When we click on the stop button, I want to execute this callback function and clear the interval. So I'm going to say here clear interval request. As you know, inside this request variable, I have the ID of this set interval. So I'm going to pass that ID here. That's super easy, right? Now let me save the changes and show you the result. Let me first open the inspect tool, click on the console. And now when I click on the start button, you can see after every one second, I'm going to get here a console message. That's easy, right? Now what if I want to get this interval after every one millisecond? To do that, I can just simply first stop this animation. I'm going to divide this 1000 by 60. So that is going to return one millisecond. So after every one millisecond, I want to execute this set interval. Let me save the changes. Now this is going to return 60 frame per second. Means you will get 60 frame for every second. The perform animation is going to execute 60 time in one second. So this means the perform animation calls is determined by the monitor refresh rate, which is most of the case is 60 Hertz or you can say 60 repaint per second because it's useless to perform a repaint if the monitor cannot show it due to its limitation. So if you want to increase the refresh rate, you have to replace your monitor as well as you have to replace this set interval method. The problem with this approach is that even though we specify this precision accurately, the browser might be busy performing other operations and our set interval calls might not make it in time for a repaint and it's going to be delay to the next cycle. This is bad because we lose one frame and in the next, the animation is performed two times. Set interval use massive amount of CPU to perform its operation. 
On the other hand, request animation frame since it's introduced was very CPU friendly causing animation to stop if the current window or tab is not visible. So let's take a look at a very simple example of request animation frame. I'm going to leave everything as it is. Instead, here I'm going to add request is equal to and then I'm going to call here window dot request animation frame method. Now you can call this request animation frame without this window object as well because as you know window is a global object you can access any method of window without specifying the namespace so once you have the request animation frame you can pass here perform animation the current function and then i'm going to do the same thing so let me copy this paste it just down here instead of set interval let me copy and paste the request animation frame and to stop the request animation when we click inside the stop button instead of clear interval here i can simply pass cancel animation frame and in this parenthesis here i'm going to pass the request id which is the request variable as simple as that let me save this now when i start the animation i'm going to get the same result but this time i'm using the request animation frame the request animation frame is faster than the set interval method. When you're creating your own game with JavaScript, instead of adding set interval inside your game, most of the developer use request animation frame. Now, let me create a very simple example of this request animation frame. So, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to first grab the start and stop button. After that, I'm going to grab this frame and these dots. So here I'm going to simply grab the frame and dots using get element by ID and get element by class name. I'm going to get these dots and this frame. Once I get that inside this perform animation right down here, I'm going to say get div. You can see I have here a variable get div. I'm going to get this div and I'm going to get the first div using the array index zero. And then I'm going to say here dot insert at send HTML. I'm going to call this method. And inside this, I'm going to call here after end comma. And then I'm going to call this division tag. This one. Right inside this parenthesis. In the double quote. Something like this. As simple as that. So what I want to do is every time when I perform this perform animation function, I want to insert this division tag after the previous div. Just after that, I'm going to save these changes. As you know, I already have this frame and dot inside this project. So now when I save all these changes, and now when I click on the start button, you can see I'm going to have my dots. And when I click on the stop button, it will stop this animation. So this request animation is going to repaint all these dots much faster than set interval. Request animation frame is CPU friendly. So next time, if you want to create any advanced animation in, in JavaScript or inside your JavaScript game, make sure to use request animation frame method. So I hope you understand the basic concept behind request animation frame. If you find anything useful, make sure to like this video, subscribe for more latest videos. That is all for now. I will see you in the next one.